So my name is Messi Moyo. I'm an artist. I'm from Zimbabwe. So what I do normally, I first I used to work with um, book pages from the early times I started working. But um, that was inspired by the moment that we didn't have um, much of uh, materials just to work with. And then from there, I started uh, using uh, those book pages that were left by people who were not even using them because that was the time when things were really hard in Zimbabwe. So some people left the country so they couldn't take books with them, and which was an advantage also to me, you know, just to have those books. So I started drawing on book pages, and um, from book pages, I realized that I. I started doing sketches on book pages later because I was working on bigger scales using acrylics and drawing. I realized in my sketchbook, which is in novels and other books, I would, the excess paint that was left on the palette, I would just, just add that to my artwork and then it became a painting. That's why those results of book pages came to be what they are now. Let me just talk about that piece. Like, you look at that same lady, she's very young. Most of the men, when a young woman stand by, they can start chatting and discussing about how she looks or they can pass comments. But look at the men, they're tired, they're older. You know, the older you become, the wiser you are. Some things you just don't pass comment, you just look, at, look away. So I'm looking at these three men, they're sleeping, two of them are sleeping. I can say all of them are sleeping because both all of them are looking down. And the lady is standing, looking beautiful, like an African lady, looking beautiful, putting on reserved clothes. Because most of my pieces, I make sure that my women were covered from here downwards. But nowadays, I got, if you notice some of them, they got a top on, like a bra, and then just covering the lower part only. Just looking, that's another subject of looking into the what's happening right now, the movement of clothing, like contemporary way of dressing that people are doing nowadays, uh, looking also into the cultural life of Zimbabwean women. But I'm looking at that piece right now, like these men are tired. They value what they look at. They value like the men that we used to have, the fathers that we have before, and the fathers that we have now, are they different? Are they the same ones? If you look at these men, do they pass comment? The fathers that we have right now, or the dads that we have right now, do they not? Do they pass comment to their, uh, to the younger generation women? Do they respect them as our the grandfathers of our fathers do? So that's what I was looking at. If it makes sense, that if that's what I was looking at. Like at, at home, we have what we call shabins. I don't know if you you, you know you're familiar with the name. Like a shabin is more like a big, big door, a backyard uh, pub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we buy like, it's like a small shack and then people come in and then they can drink illegal wine, illegal, take in illegal drugs and do all that. So this is more like a warehouse, but it's a back door thing. We buy they turned this whole house in abandoned area into a, like a shabin, like a place whereby they are doing illegal stuff. So they are doing um, gambling in there. That's why you see she's doing that casino thing whereby you roll and you put the dice and all that. So the glove is whereby this is a woman, a young woman, and the way she's dressed, it's like men are looking and they're waiting. They can distract her by passing comments and all that. So we all know that about the boxing glove is for fighting. So she's more like a woman who is ready to defend herself. Even though she's working this job she really wants to get money out of, she's just ready to defend herself or attack if any, at any point she feels like her life kind of threatened. So because at, the, at, uh, at, the, um, uh, at these kind of places, people fight a lot. And once they are drunk, they can fight a lot, they can be abusive, they can say words, but you ignore them because of that, looking at our culture as a woman, you're supposed to be in the kitchen cooking and doing other things, but she is pushing all that away and try to defend herself by putting a red glove. And the color red kind of attracts a lot of people to see that this is an obvious 
thing in my hand. Mm. So try me and you see how it works. <laughs> so she didn't put on a black cloth because some of them put on glasses so they won't see it. They would just be for passing COVID. But when they see this, they have to be think twice. So that's why I call this the glove. Yep, it's the new down. So when I was looking at this, this is more like, you can, as you can see, there are flowers, like many different flowers. But the flowers, I, I called it rawa ruva, ruva rawa. Ruva, it's a flower, it means flower. The flower is fallen, fallen, meaning that there are things that we value and we, we call beauty in our life and we love, but unfortunately when those things fall down or they die or they, they no longer excite you as much, we call them rawa, like it has fallen, it has lost its beauty. Like this young girl is giving respect to what she loves, but that thing is no longer as, respect, uh, as beautiful as you choose to because it has fallen. It has lost its glory when she looks at it. So that's why I called it Rawa Rua. So looking at the young people, they're always having um, relationship issues whereby they just like a person, the next thing they just go to the next one because they feel like the love has just gone out or it has fallen. They've fallen out. It, like we always said, I fell out of love with you. So the flower just falls out. So I was just looking at how people you like in your life, they just fall out of love with you or they just back off. So that's why I called it Rawaru. So this is one of the pieces that I did uh, in 2007. So back then I would stitch items directly on the art piece and I would use essen, I would use uh, fabric, just like you can see this one because I wanted to create that 3D effect on an art piece. And also I would use book pages, um, not book pages, but newspapers, just to create that, uh, because I really like the information, like I said, I would always stick newspapers on and, um, and any objects that I come across. At some point I remember working with the needle, uh, leaving the needle hanging, on the art piece and I sold that piece and the woman was teaching herself it called it was called stitching my myself or something so that piece got sold so this way really, like, the kind of artworks that I'll do but I was looking back in the community and the model who was there was my sister and the other one was another sister but this one I got from somebody who was standing in the street so I would take images from different um, from different parts of my sketchbook and then combine them together just to come up with one piece. So in this piece, that's what you see, and I worked with oil on this piece and it would take me like days for me to complete it because with oil, you know that it takes a little time to dry and all that. But otherwise, I was just looking at the day-to-day -day life of a woman, how women come together they can socialize, they can talk about what happened previous, the previous night or what's been happening in their lives and how they can give each other some solutions to whatever they're going through in life. So that's why I, will, I worked with this one, okay? So these were, like I said, these were some of the books that I got from people um, that I've been collecting and working on. And um, this one is from a um, Danish dictionary. I have no clue what it says, so do not ask. <laughs> so, but all I know is a dictionary, so that means it's, it's all about explaining words. So these are like scenarios people that I see every day. People washing clothes, and then people sitting, and then in all that. So I would just use those sketchbooks just to sketch the idea of what's happening. So I can talk about this one, just a simple sketch. So we were at a funeral and my father was, my, my real father was just pushing these kids because they'll call him, Grandpa, Grandpa, how are you? So they were so happy to see him because they haven't seen him in a long time. 
So there was a broken wheelbarrow. So they all, so my father was just standing by and they was like, push us, push us. It's a funeral. My father's father had, my grandfather had died. That was his father. So now all the kids did not understand uh, that people were mourning. They were sad. They were like busy saying, Grandpa, Grandpa, push us, push us. Push. They, they all rushed on that broken um, thing and then they sat. So my father had to make them happy despite of the situation and started pushing them, like looking at the positive side when things are negative, you know. So that's what I was looking at this title for it was wheelbarrow say i'm looking into the life of a woman and if you notice most of the art pieces i do have men in my art pieces but basically i'm looking at the um, woman's kind of life what she's going through each and every day you know social life political life and all of that so now i'm looking at these women so women because the groove it's thick it's in the forest because of these abuses happening and all that, women normally they go together talking, one for security reasons, so that whenever they, they are being chased, the other one has got a higher voice than the other one, so they can scream and do that. But what I like about that is the togetherness of the women, despite of what they go through. That one you see, the other one has got a baby, the other one doesn't have. Meaning that they always, women always need each other just to support each other, whether it's financially, whether it's security, and I'm sure, I think it's it's normal in all our neighborhood whereby even you go out, you tell the next woman at the next door like, look after my kids, I'm coming to the grocery, I'm going to the grocery store, I'll be there back in 10 minutes. That means you, you feel comfortable with the next woman supporting you whenever you have uh, you, whenever you are in a time of need. So I just did that piece, uh, it's called Food Collection. So they just, I just named it Food Collection because I wasn't sure with the name, the food, people are not going to pick the name, so I just call it called Food Collection. So this lady was the model, so she would be standing there for minutes like this or like that. So she would know she was very good. And then, she would be telling us stories, so she said to me, it was very interesting because she said to me, ah, oh, she said to everybody who was in the room, I was, I had a room that I have and I had my boyfriend, we were staying with my boyfriend and his friend just came over, which was the boyfriend, and he was like, a, he just crashed in the house, like, he just came unexpectedly. And then they were busy having a nice time in their own house, in their own space with the boyfriend. And this friend comes over. When he comes over, he studies. Whenever they wanted to talk, she wanted to talk to the boyfriend, the guy, who, the visitor, would interject and, you know, start saying over this woman. And she didn't like it. And so whenever the woman would talk, and now she said, I was quiet for a while. So I wanted to say something, and then he went like, shh. You know how it is when somebody shoots me, like, shh. She, she said at first, I was like, oh my God, did you just do that? So she said, I ignored, and then wanted to say something to my boyfriend, and then she went like, shh. She said, don't shush me. Why are you shushing me in my own house? So it was like so funny the way she was just making that dialogue and trying to make people understand how this guy was like shushing her in her own space. That, that's why I, you see, like I told you about that piece about women covering their head share that they're in courtship or they are married. So she is in a courtship with someone whom she loves. She is loving this person, so she covers her head, taking it from my own cultural way, covering her head, she's in her own house. And somebody comes in her own space with her, which is where she becomes comfortable with her husband, with her boyfriend or husband. I don't know, and then somebody tries to shush her in her own space. How would I react or how would you react? So I would definitely understand if somebody shushes you in your own space whereby you feel comfortable in saying anything you want and they come over and shush you. So that's why I really had that piece like, it's more like a question, like, um, don't shush me. Would you? want me to shush you? Would you enjoy anybody trying to shush you in your own space? I don't think it's 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 wise. So I just leave it like so that's the that's the reason for that piece. That's why also you see those nets like that. Like she belongs to somebody, but somebody wants her to be like quiet, be quiet. 
you know. So that's the piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>